and welcome to another third grade episode of Math Matters. My name is Ms. Matthews, and today we are going to be learning about how to create and interpret data in bar graphs and pictographs. This week, we have been learning about how to collect data and represent it in bar graphs and pictographs. Let's review what we've learned by doing this same but different routine together. Take a moment to look at the two different graphs shown here. What is the same about them? And what is different? We'll pause here to give you some time to think about it. Let's come back together and talk about what you might have discovered. You may have started by reading the labels on both of the graphs. The titles are the same. Favorite sports. The categories or groups at the bottom are the same. Both have groups labeled with different sports, as you can see in the pictures, and by reading the label, sports. They both also count the number of students, as labeled on the left side of the graph here. You may have even noticed that the data shown in the height of the bars is similar to the height of the pictures in the pictograph. But maybe you also noticed the way the data is shown in bars on the graph on the left is different than the way they are shown as pictures on the right. And did you notice that the bar graph includes numbers to help you count the data? How is this different than the pictograph? That's right, in the pictograph, you have to count the pictures to find out the total for each group. Some of you might have wondered if the data or numbers of students voting for each sport are actually the same for each graph. For example, the bar and the basketball pictures look to be about the same height, but do they actually represent the same number? If you said no, you are correct. There are six students represented in the bar graph. We can use the numbers on the side to see that. But in the pictograph, there are only three basketballs. So right now, without a key telling us otherwise, it looks like only three students voted for basketball as their favorite sport in the pictograph. How could we use a key in the pictograph to make the numbers in the data match? If we add a key telling us to count each picture by two, then we would count the pictures in the pictograph differently. For example, now the basketballs would be counted as two, four, six, giving us the same total as those in the bar graph. Great detective work. In today's lesson, we are going to continue to interpret pictographs and bar graphs we will have an opportunity for you to reflect on your learning at the end of the lesson. We'll continue to work on our portrait of a graduate skills today as we record our data in bar graphs and use our writing to keep track of our thinking and share our ideas with others. Remember, you may have questions or make mistakes as you are learning new things today, and that's okay. You may find it helpful to write down any questions that you have while you're participating in today's lesson so that you can continue your learning with someone at home or when you talk again with your teacher. We are goal-directed and resilient learners, which means we don't give up and we keep on trying. For today's lesson, it may be helpful to have some paper and a pencil or some crayons on hand so you can record your thinking or keep track of the data that we share. Plain paper will work great. And if you have lined paper or graph paper at home, you can use that too. We'll pause now to give you some time to gather your materials.
You may hear some words that are new to you today, so as we work together, listen for these words and try to make connections between those new words and what we are learning. The first word is pictograph. A pictograph is a graph that uses pictures to represent information collected. A bar graph is a graph that uses bars to represent information collected. A row goes across from left to right, and a column goes up and down. Take a moment and see what you notice or what you wonder related to this bar graph. Today we are going to practice creating true statements related to our bar graphs. We are going to create four types of statements. Statements using the word greatest, statements using the word least, statements that compare, and statements using the word total. Can you come up with a statement using the data from the bar graph that includes the word greatest? How about the word greater or more than? Take a moment and write down the statement that you come up with. Here are a couple of examples. You may have come up with something different, and that is all right. Gorillas were visited by the greatest number of people at the zoo. Another statement could be, tigers were visited by more visitors than giraffes. Here's another one. Gorillas had a greater amount of people visit them than the elephants did. How did you do on your statement? Can you come up with a statement using the data from the bar graph that includes the word least? How about the word less or smaller than? Take a moment and write down the statement that you come up with. Here are a couple of examples. You might have come up with something different, and that is perfectly fine. Rhinos were visited by the least number of people at the zoo. Another statement could be, bears were visited by less visitors than giraffes. Here's another one. The number of people that visited the tigers was smaller than the number of people that visited the gorillas. How did you do with your statement? Can you come up with a statement that compares the data from the bar graph? Take a moment and write down the statement that you think of. Here are a couple of examples. Again, you might have come up with something different, and that is okay. 10 more people visited the gorillas than the elephants. Another statement could be, elephants and tigers were both visited by 70 people. Here's another one. 95 people visited the bears and the rhinos combined, compared to 150 people that visited the elephants and gorillas combined. How did you do on your statement? Can you come up with a statement that uses the word total using the data from the bar graph? Take a moment and write down the statement that you come up with. Here is a sentence frame that may help you out. A total of blank people visited the zoo. What do you need to do to complete this statement? 
Yes, you need to add the number of people that visited each animal. Take a moment and solve this in any way that makes sense to you. How did you solve it? Did you do anything to make it easier to solve? I needed to figure out the number of visitors for each animal first. Did you do this too? Or did you solve it differently? Next, I added them together, but I saw some friendly numbers that would make adding easier. I saw that 70 elephants plus 80 gorillas equals 150 animal visitors. And 150 visitors plus 50 bear visitors equals 200 visitors. I crossed off the 70, 80, and 50 because I've already added these. I then added 45 rhino and 65 giraffe visitors, which equals 110 visitors. Again, I crossed off the 45 and 65 because I already added them. Next, I added the 200 visitors to the 110 and got 310 visitors. But I still have those 70 tiger visitors left to add. So I add the 310 animals to the 70 tigers and get my total of 380. I have now added all of the numbers of people that visited the zoo. So let's add 380 to my original statement. A total of 380 people visited the zoo. Today we learn more about how to read and interpret pictographs and bar graphs. We began today by comparing a pictograph and a bar graph with the same data. Then we practice making different types of statements related to the data in a bar graph. How did you do today working towards our learning goal? Reflect on your progress by selecting which emoji best matches how you're feeling about today's lesson. A smiley emoji if you got it and are feeling good. A thinking emoji if you think you understand but need more practice. And the confused emoji if you feel like you have some more questions or could use some help with today's lesson. As you think about the learning goals for today, maybe there's something new that you learned and you don't want to forget. Or maybe there is something we talked about today that you still have questions about. Take a minute to record your reflection on today's lesson and save them for the next time you are able to check in with your teacher. Mathematicians are skilled communicators who are goal-directed and resilient. During our lesson today, you worked on writing to record and communicate your ideas through graphing. You also persevered or kept on trying as you learned new mathematical ideas, even if it was hard. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Math Matters for Third Grade. My name is Ms. Matthews, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we continue to learn more about data and graphing. Have a mathematical day!